All right, I think we are good to go. So, uh, hey everyone, this is Scott with the Scott Man, and welcome to the live Q and A for April 2024. Uh, this is the first one I've been doing for the general audience. Um, so, if you if you haven't really known already, I do like monthly Q and As for my patrons on Patreon, which we have a lot of a lot of fun times with that. Where we answer a lot some some cool questions, even talk about some awesome things too. Like what I've been doing lately too has been talking about things that have been happening with me lately, especially with travel wise. But every once in a while, like at least a couple of times a year, like what we're doing today, I want to have the Q and A for everybody. So that way it's like, you don't have to be a patron to be able to ask me questions or anything like that. So, so figure just hop on here for a good hour. can answer all your different questions and just, just have a, have a good time. And it's like, yeah, matter of fact, I just got off of, something else I was doing for a good hour or two. So it's like, Oh, I, I need to go live. <laughs> so I'll get everybody a chance to be able to join in. And yeah, <clears throat> but yeah, it's been a very nice Sunday so far. And yeah, looking outside, it is incredibly nice here in Michigan. So, <laughs> so it's kind of hard almost doing a live stream today. It's like, do I really want to be outside, but I'll have times late, I'll have time later today. So no worries. <laughs> Up. Hey, boss, just curious what has been your most favorite place you visit in your travels? Up. Hey there, it's, a, it's a good to see you on here. So it's like, yeah, that, it's, that's a question I get very often, and it could really change depending on when you ask me. So, yeah, and so it's like you can ask me this question at any, like, any of my Q&A streams, and I, it can really change upon the answer. But, but some of the top places lately, like, one of my favorite trips that I have done was the trip I did back in September of last year when I went to the Republic of Georgia. <clears throat> it was like a two week trip I did, although I was only there for a week and a half. I went to Istanbul, Turkey for a few days before that because it's like right on the way to the, the Republic of Georgia, which is over in like the Caucasus region, like in the east side of the Black Sea. But yeah, I had an incredibly wonderful trip there. It's like I went on a group trip there. Amazing food there. The scenery is just incredible, especially as you get up into the mountains. It's just absolutely breathtaking. <clears throat> it's like, yeah, it's like, it, it's like very memorable. And of course, we even got to see some historic architecture too, like even some like former like sanatoriums, which were abandoned and we were given exclusive access to check out a lot of these places. So it was really fun to just explore them and, make some video and then also take some cool pictures too. So, but yeah, had a really incredible trip. So that's definitely one of my top spots. Also what Bali was at Bali, Indonesia is another one too, where I did, where I went there like five years ago and that was an incredible trip too. And then even some cool things here in the United States too, like some, like I've always enjoyed going to like to New England. Like I really enjoyed when I went to like Maine and also to New Hampshire, got to check out some of the, Parks out there and just absolutely incredible. <clears throat> Who's us? Uh, Scott or the Scott man? Howdy. <laughs> Good to see you, Captain Crit. Uh, great to see you on here. <laughs> Thank you for the answer. Go Wolverines. Uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The Michigan Wolverines did an amazing job with their football program this past season where they ended up winning the national championship. Their basketball team, the men's basketball team, on the other hand, was horrible. <laughs> So it's like it was the exact opposite, but it was nice when it come when it came to men's basketball. Though that my the the university I went to, Oakland University, won their won their league, and then they even made it into the 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 NCAA basketball tournament, and they upset Kentucky in the first round, which was really impressive. I was like, oh sweet, we might be able to do this, but unfortunately, we ended up losing to NC State in the second round, but. Hey, look at it this way. NC State made it the final four. So Oakland University, their their loss in the tournament was in the second round to a team that went to the final four, even as like a, a lower seed team. So pretty impressed with that. But I think the women's basketball team for Michigan didn't do too bad. And then I think Michigan's hockey team was in the frozen four, which is basically or got to the frozen four, which is like the the men's hockey version of the the final four that's in basketball. Hi, Scott, man. Do you get ex exclusive access to a lot of places? Do you have a lot of connections? So for the first question, um, not necessarily like, for, like 
what I was talking about with the group chat that I did to Georgia, where our group was given exclusive apps access. So that one we did get exclusive access, but it was done mostly for the the two guys, which, which one of them is a very good, very close friend of mine. Like they were, they they were the ones who planned the trip before I even arrived there, and as well as all the other attendees. So they were able to get like access and special permission for certain places. Some places are a little bit more public than others, but there are some that were that are like private property or very exclusive. So they but they were able to get permission to for us to go there. But when it comes to my solo travels, I tend to only go to places which are open to the public. So I got so like. If, if there is any reason I had to, if I want to go to something that's more of a private property, then I would need to get permission from the owner of of that site before I would be able to go there. Otherwise, I pretty much just stick to like to public areas. And then for the second the second question, yeah, connections. It's like yeah, I definitely have a there. I have a lot of content creator friends who either on YouTube or on Instagram. So it's like. To where I'll talk with every so often, and there's been been occasional times where I'll even meet up with different people too, like on my travels. So just like last year, for example, I went to Calgary, Alberta, where I got to hang out with my friend Kelsey, who lives out in that area. So like I was able to hang out with her for like a long weekend, check out the Calgary Stampede. So that's one example, and. So it's like, yeah, whether it's for meeting up for actual trips or you're just talking like either like by text or like on social media, like there's different people like talk with a lot. So like, like Greg Snell is a good friend of mine. Like I talk with him a lot. In fact, he was one of the people who co-ran the Georgia trip last year. So, but, but yeah, there's a lot of people that, yeah, I definitely will talk to offline about different travel related stuff. <clears throat> uh, why do you need to get permission? So, so there's some places where, they might be close to the public where it's like, so it's not like, not like a museum where that you can just go into during like out opening hours where for that, you can just go in like normal, but there could be some places which could be off, off limits to visitors. So, but they might be something, but the, or the owner might be open to allowing a small amount of people to access, but with permission. So so that's usually the case with like something that's more private, like a, like a private property to where there might be a case where they may not allow general visitors, but you might be able to reach out to them by phone or by email to where they'll, and you tell them like the, the reason why you wanted to visit that place. And then they'll usually will let you in. So, so that's typically with, with how things work with permissions. It's usually for anything that's usually off limits to the everyday visitor or anything that's, private property that's not open to the public usually. <clears throat> if you if you don't want to swear you can just call me Car call me Cardi my wife wants to know what your favorite highway drive is. Uh Oh uh, oh no, no worries <laughs> but yeah so favorite highway I've been a lot of really good ones so I'll break it up into th there's like three that come to mind. One, like one is like one of my favorite drives I've ever done was the drive, the scenic drive that you take up to the top of Mount Washington in New Hampshire. Like that was absolutely beautiful. It's like you, you drive up a few hundred or a few thousand feet above sea level to get all the way up to the top of Mount Washington. That was a really cool drive. Of course, driving back down is really challenging too, because you don't want to wear out your brakes or anything. And there's a lot of signs warning you it's like yeah take frequent breaks to cool cool down your brakes so i took advantage of that and but but yeah that was an incredibly beautiful drive i remember think filming that for youtube or something a, a, a while ago and that like i really had a lot of fun filming that and when it comes to freeways here in the united states one of my favorites is interstate 70 when you go west from like west out of denver colorado as you're heading up into the rocky mountains pretty much anywhere like anywhere west of Denver, like you go through like the Continental Divide, and then you go up into the mountains, going through like the Eisenhower Tunnel, which is in between Georgetown and Vail, Colorado. And then, of course, then you go back down the mountain, and then as you go west of Vail, then you go you go through Glenwood Canyon. Like that is incredibly beautiful. And then the third one, it, like my favorite drive I've ever done, that's in another country was. I don't know. I can't remember the number or the name of the highway, but I remember driving in Bosnia and Herzegovina 
back in my trip to the Balkans in 2017, I was driving from Mostar to Sarajevo and the, 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 the main highway, which goes through there goes through, like it goes along a river and you go through like, it's not quite a gorge, but it almost feels like a little bit because you got these high mountains that go up on both sides and like the downside, it was a, it was raining as I was driving the, through there but even with the rain like it was some of the most incredible landscapes i've ever seen it's like i it's like it's like i i didn't even mind it was raining it was that beautiful so yeah so yeah, those are some of my favorite drives i've, I've ever done so yeah so yeah cardia thank you for, yeah thank you for the for the question yeah that's a really good one <clears throat> uh, do you think you would ever knock a restaurant for the state of the restroom like some people do on on google reviews um it, it's hard to say just because it's very rare that when I go to a restaurant, I go into the restroom to, to do anything in there just because like that very, it's pretty rare. I have to use the restroom while I'm at a rest, restaurant. And if I need to wash my hands, I'll typically use hand sanitizer. So it's like, so I, so it's hard to tell for me that because I really go in, into the restroom. I don't really know if, because, because yeah, it's like, some restrooms could be could be not maintained very well. Others could be have very very clean. So, so it's not really something that I personally would rate or anything. <clears throat> if I were if, if although of course I could I could maybe ten years from now when my, maybe my bladder is not as is not as strong as it is now. It's like that, that might change where then I might talk about the bathroom, but I probably wouldn't film inside there because it's not really, not really a good idea to film inside a restroom. Really. It's not, it's not a smart idea, but, but although I will say some of the cleanest bathrooms I've ever been in were, was not at a restaurant, but I was at, at, at Bucky's, which is like a really huge gas station slash convenience store. That's mostly in the Southern United States, especially in the state of Texas. And they've won awards for cleanest bathrooms. And it's one of those places where it's like you, it's like, even if you don't have to use the restroom, you're going to want to use the restroom there because it's just sparkly clean in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Robert Sitch for your question there. Oh, good afternoon. Scott man fans up. Hey there. Uh, bit, bit meets lap. Uh, it's great. It's great to see you on here. Uh, <clears throat> It's cool to meet up with people during travels. Love that. Oh, absolutely. It's like, yeah, as much as I love solo travel, it's always cool to meet up with with, with friends or family members and getting to travel with other people too. Like that's even why occasionally we'll do group trips too, because it's even though I could easily do solo travel, but at the same time, it's cool to meet to meet new people and make connections. <clears throat> oh, hey there, ra rampaging elephants. Great to see you on here. <laughs> Will you do a watch party of the Geography Now Zimbabwe episode once it's uploaded? Um, I don't know if I would do that just because I have not. I I didn't even I I, I didn't even know about this channel till just now. So it's like it's kind of hard to do like a watch party when I don't even know what the channel is or what what's even about. So I don't know if I would really do something like that to to be honest. Although I always want to check out the channel though because it might be pretty interesting though. But but that doesn't mean though I wouldn't be completely opposed to doing like a type of a watch party. But if I were to do something like that, it's like I don't know. I probably wouldn't be able to like live stream the video itself too because of copyright reasons. But I do know there are just like how people will do like the reaction videos where people will react to the video. Sometimes where depending on the content, they they'll show like the video like I like it like on a part of the screen or something, and then the rest of the camera is, is basically the the person reacting to the video. So that's always something, but depends on the content. So that's always something I could experiment with at some point. So I'll definitely, so, I, so I'm going to say I probably, I don't see myself doing a watch party for that, but the idea of something like that might be something I could be open to though. So, uh, so yeah, thank you for the question and the suggestion, but yeah, that's definitely not a bad idea though. Up. Some chefs say that it's that if it's not very clean behind the toilet, then the kitchen may not be clean too. Yeah, that's yeah. Unfortunately, that can be the case too because I have seen shows like like Ramsey's Kitchen Nightmares where where it's like behind the scenes, the restaurant's not that clean and things like that. So it's like it's it's 
So it's kind of hard to tell. It's like because you're not going into the kitchen and seeing what things are like. So because you never know, you, you can go to a restaurant and find out that hygiene practices aren't up to code or anything. That's usually why when it comes to looking for restaurants to go to, I tend to go to like restaurants that are highly rated. So I look like at Google or Yelp to make sure I'm not going to something that's low rates. So that would be because I, because at the same time, I'm going to a place to cover a restaurant. But at the same time, I would like to not get sick afterwards. So, so it's like, yeah. So it's like, it's one of those things I, it's like, I have to be aware of, but I try not to think about, about it too hard. Otherwise I may not want to go to a restaurant or something. But that's why I'll look at reviews to make sure I'm not seeing a bunch of reviews saying that I just got sick here last night and things like that. Because if I see, see a lot of things like that, then that might deter me away from going to a restaurant. So, yeah, that's definitely something that you have to keep your eyes open to, though. So, <clears throat> uh, when will we be able to finish the US 131 driving videos? So that one is a little bit more challenging just because it's on the other side of the state. And so I, I have to dedicate like, like an entire day to do like one segment where compared to things on the east side of the state where it's like I could film something quite easily on I like I-75 or I-94. So that tends to be a lot easier depending on my schedule with all the other content I'm usually filming for the day. But I definitely would like to do more of 131 though, because I think I've only done like a couple stretches so far. Like one, like the stretch between Kalamazoo and Grand Rapids and then another one that goes up to like into like Nuego County, that area. But one stretch I would like to do at some point, though, is the, the, the southernmost stretch of 131, start, which starts out like just on the south side of the Michigan-Indiana border and then and then come up through like three rivers and then concluding up at I-94 near like Portage and Kalamazoo. And then there's – and of course there's the another freeway stretch of 131 going further north as you head up toward like Big Rapids, Reed City, and Cadillac. So – Definitely should try to do something like that sometime this sometime later this year, maybe even this summer, even or late spring. <clears throat> because there's more things on the west side of the state I would like to do. Have you ever thought about doing a trip where you drive on Route 66? I think it could be a fun series of videos visiting all the small towns. Yeah, that that would be a really cool, a really cool idea. It's like because yeah, I know that that's a lot. In fact, one of the people I follow on I think on YouTube and Instagram, uh. He's a photographer, like a travel photographer. His name's Brendan Vanson. I think he he think he did some type of a project several years ago where he went on a Route 66. And I don't know if he did the whole thing from Illinois to California, but but at least he, he may have done at least done like a part of it. But it would be a really cool idea. It's like it's something I would have to dedicate like a full week or a week and a half to do because it is a long route between Chicago and and California. To, to do to do the whole route 66 but it would be really cool it'd be a really good fit for me just because uh, i really enjoy doing the road trips and of course there are a lot of unique diners and restaurants along the old route 66 so like it would definitely be up my alley in fact uh in october 2020 when i was driving back from utah and arizona to come back uh i stopped at a restaurant in amarillo texas called the big texan where they where they're known for their gigantic like monster size steaks although i didn't get anything that big but it's like right out it's 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 right off i-40 but the actual road it's on is the old route 66 so it's like you get restaurants like those or like those old classic diners that you see in all these old american movies those old american historical movies so but that's a really cool idea i don't have any immediate plans of doing anything like that but wouldn't be a bad idea though. So that's definitely a cool idea. So yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. Thank you for your question and the idea though. What are the best tacos in Austin, Texas? So that's a, that, that's a very good question because yeah, I'm trying to remember the place I went to that had some, Oh, there's two really good places that I went to in Austin. One, I think was called, it's like not the pot to pull up my phone now because I'm not exactly sure where exactly the names of them, but I'll pull them up really quick though. It's like one of them is like, okay. My phone can work with me here <laughs> because yeah, one's like right in downtown that's just along like Congress Avenue, like near the Congress Avenue bridge where you have all the bats flying around the bridge at sunset. Okay. One place is called Veracruz or they have some really good tacos, but my favorite place 
I'm trying to find the place. If I can't find it, then I'll just have to say it's probably on the. It's a, it's in my it's in my restaurant tour that I did in Austin last year when I went when I went down there. Um, I don't know if it was Tacos Juanita or no, it's, no, it's not that place. Uh, it's like yeah, I, I can't remember the name of the place. It's over in the. It's on the east side of town, just on the east side of I-35 in Austin. But yeah, if if you watch my my Austin restaurant tour that I did in early 2023, the place is on there. It's like the second place I went to where their tacos were phenomenal. And it's like I remember eating at the counter. Like I had like a breakfast taco and then like a regular taco. That was delicious. So that's probably my favorite place. And then that Veracruz place was a was another good one too. But yeah, thank you for the question though. <laughs> okay, we're gonna see where I left off. Okay, up here in Canada, Canada, the Irving truck stops out east advertise the staff frequently checking the washrooms. Oh, cool. So, but yeah, it's like because I haven't driven a whole lot in Canada except for like Ontario. So I like, haven't been to any of those truck stops, truck stops. Although I think I did see those when I went to Nova Scotia in 2019. But so I, I'm glad that they that they keep their bathrooms or washrooms up up to up to code though. <clears throat> are you ever going to go back to playing video games and making some let's plays up? Uh, so to answer that question, so the answer is going to be no, because I'm pretty much mostly travel. If I were to ever do anything with video game content, I probably would make a second channel for that. But for, for anybody who, whom doesn't know, like back when I first started my YouTube channel in 2009, so this was like 15 years ago. So uh, I'm already going on like my 15 year anniversary which is, which is uh, I'm still amazed by that. But then I start off by doing travel content, but also I, I even did some video game content too. So it's like I had a mix of travel and video games. So because I remember doing like a playthrough of Donkey Kong Country. And then, well, in fact, the one video I still have up on my YouTube channel, my very first YouTube video that I ever did was like, was that was like a like a one or two minute video of a level of Super Mario World because I was doing like a it was like a response to a to another channel like I still put I kept that video on public just because it's my very first video ever it's like it's like you don't want to hide that from from people but I don't really advertise the the video games content anymore because I pretty much moved away from that I'm pretty much all travel 100% of the time now plus at the same time too I don't really have a lot of time to play video games these days. In fact, I don't even know if I, I've hardly played any video games since I was last on an airplane when I went out to Hartford, Connecticut in March when I went to nineties con. So, but yeah, I just been, been pretty busy lately trying to not only work a full-time job during the week, but also of course travel on the weekends because I'm basically a weekend traveler, but, and also at the same time trying to maintain a YouTube channel and, and an Instagram channel too with posting a lot of different content so it's like i don't really have a lot of time to invest in the video games really anymore but yeah if i were to ever do anything video game related in the future though <clears throat> if i were to get the time for that i would probably would make a second channel for it just because my channel is called scott Money 95 travel and like people might be wondering what's going on if all of a sudden i was to post like a, me playing like the legend of zelda or something <laughs> But yeah, so if I were to ever do something like that, I would, or even like a live stream of something, when it comes to that, I probably would make a second channel for that. Or either that or do like, or do that like on Twitch or something. I don't know. But a good question, though. Yeah, thank you for asking me that, though. <clears throat> Scott, man, have you ever played GeoGuessr? I feel like you might be good at it since you've been to so many places. So, yes, as a matter of fact, I have played that before. And I guess that could be one game I could actually play on this channel because it's a travel related game. So if anybody who doesn't know GeoGuessr is basically it works off Google Street View where you're basically it's like a game where you're trying to guess where where you're where in the world you're placed. So I have I don't play it very often because again I don't have time to play a lot of games or anything but it's it's pretty fun though, and it's like it's like you're trying to guess where where in the world you are, whether you're someplace in the United States, you're in Canada or Argentina or someplace in Europe or Asia or Africa. And some of the clues you have to try to go by is by looking at some of the signs, like what language the signs are in, whether it's English, Spanish, Chinese, French, Russian, Arabic, etc. 
and then, or even, and then maybe, or even better, try to find out what, what side of the road they're driving on or, or you could, or you could perhaps find the city name. Then he might be like, guess, Oh, okay. I'm in Boston or, Oh, I'm in Berlin. <laughs> so yeah, it's a really fun game. And I could always potentially maybe do something where I could always do like a live stream of me playing GeoGuessr or something one day. That might be a cool idea. Maybe, maybe it's like a, maybe like a subscriber special or something. Uh, you, you never know, but yeah, it's a, it's a, I have played it's really fun and, yeah, definitely really enjoy that. I remember, I think one person I, I really follow, like on Instagram and YouTube, uh, Lexi Limitless. She's the one who is the the youngest person to travel to every country in the world. Like I follow her content quite a bit. I remember in one of her YouTube videos, she played GeoGuessr. So I, I'm sure I could easily do that too. That might be a fun video to do at some point. <clears throat> Okay, well, one once time I went to a real nasty bathroom at a gas station. Wish I could have rated zero stars. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. Unfortunately, that does exist. And it's like, because some gas stations, bat, but some gas station bathrooms can be absolutely nasty and you don't really want to go to any of them. So it's like, but yeah, it's like, it, it's again, again, unfortunately, those do exist and hopefully by chance I don't come across any of them, but one day I might, might unfortunately have to, if I have to all of a sudden have to use the restroom <clears throat> geography. Okay. Geography now is a still ongoing YouTube series where they talk about other countries or about countries and their culture and alph alphabetical order. And they're three episodes away from the end. Oh, that, oh, that's really cool. That That's a really cool video series idea. They're talking about each country. So it's cool how they're going from, Going from like the early like beginning of the alphabet, like Albania or Afghanistan, all the way to like Zambia and Zimbabwe, which is at the because they at the very end of the alphabet. They could, so I guess the last three videos they have would be Yemen, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. So that's that's pretty cool that they're almost to the end though. So I almost be curious if they decide to do like a do like a start back start back from the beginning again to like be like maybe maybe not necessarily like the same type of content. It could be like what's new in this place. And I don't know. It's like, it's hard to say though, but it's cool that they're doing that though, because I'm sure it'll catch a lot of people's attention. So yeah. 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 Thanks for letting me know though. When you drive and not record it, uh, do you listen to music? If so, what kind? Oh yeah. Yeah. Very good question. Because yeah, when I do my driving videos, obviously you're not hearing music because if I was all of a sudden be playing something on the radio or something on like on Spotify. It's like, yeah, I'm going to get, I, I'll get a bunch of copyright claims. So I can't really do that. Plus you wouldn't be able to really hear me a whole lot. So, but when I'm not recording a video, like a, like a driving video, it's like, yeah, I, I have, I, it, I either listen to like Sirius XM because I have a subscription for that, or I'll play something out of the playlist on Spotify so different music I'll listen to. I, I listen to all kinds of different music, like whether it's like pop music from like the 60s or the 60s or like the 80s or the 90s. Or like a lot of like rock music from like the 50s to like going up to, to, up to the, like the 90s. So like everything from like classic rock to like like 80s or 90s alternative rock. And there's also or even some sometimes even like 80s and 90s country country music, too. So like some of the stations I listen to, like on the Sirius XM, for example, like there's the 60s Gold Station, there's <clears throat> Classic Vinyl, Classic Rewind, there's First Wave, there's Lithium, uh, Prime Country, The Bridge, which is like classic soft rock. Like those are some of the stations I listen to. And one of the things I like about the 60s Gold Station, which is the 60s Pop Station, is that weekday mornings, uh, there is a DJ named Flash Phelps who's on there. And what I really like about him is that he's a big time traveler where all the time he's on some type of a road trip around the United States. So like, he's like, a, he's, he's like an encyclopedia at all the different, like different stops around the United States. So it's always really cool to hear about all the different travels he does around the United States. So, so that's one of the reasons why I, I listen to that station, especially like on weekday mornings or something, especially if I'm on like on a, road trip during the week or something. <clears throat> yep. 
Would you ever consider meeting fans along the road if you're going to be in their city or town? Oh, give me one second. I need to drink some water. I'm sure my throat's starting to dry out a little bit. Mm. Yeah, it's like every once in a while, it's like I got to keep myself hydrated so that way I don't dry up or anything. That I, can't, I run into that same problem sometimes when I'm doing like a, like a long driving video. But yeah, I'm definitely open to the idea. It's like when it comes to meeting fans, it's like I want to make sure that's in a public place, though. It's like I would only want to be like in a like at a, like at a public park or something or near like a restaurant just because at the same time, it's like it's, it's always cool to meet to meet people, but at the same time, I want to make sure that I'm staying safe too and that I'm not getting in any situation that is dangerous or anything. So yeah, like I wouldn't necessarily, I'm definitely not opposed to meeting fans. It's always great meeting fans in the road. There's even been a couple of times too. It's like, Hey, I, I enjoy your videos. Like matter of fact, uh, when I was in line for meeting, uh, I think Jody Sweden at nineties con, like they, one of the, one of the people who one of the volunteers recognized me from a '90s con video I filmed the previous year. It's like, hey, it's like I saw your '90s con video from last year. I, I love that. It's like, and then and then one time I was coming out at a restaurant. I think last year, it's like, are like, hey, like, are you the Scott man? <laughs> so it's always cool meeting people, even even like randomly. It's like if you happen to if you if you're out and about and you see all of a sudden you see me filming something yeah feel free to come up and say hi to me it's like i love i love meeting people like out and about it's like yeah like it's, a, it's like yeah it's like yeah don't feel like you're being rude if all of a sudden you're interrupting me or something while i'm filming and it's like hey, hey it's a scott man it's cool he's finally seeing out and about yeah definitely come up and say hi it's like i it's, like, it's always cool to meet you guys but like in terms of like a an actual meetup like i definitely would be open to doing some type of a meetup or something at like a like like a group meetup or something but again it's like i try would i try to do something that's out in a public place and making sure that try to try to make sure that yeah it's out like again it's like it's in public and like just just for safety reasons but it's definitely something i would be potentially be open to <clears throat> Uh, New England has some urban truck stops too. Oh yeah, I think I remember you were telling me about that too in the past. Where I think, especially like as you go like to like think Maine or something, because I know. So I think Irv, the Irving Oil Company is like out of like New Brunswick. I think for what, I think for what you told me about a while back, and Maine it kind of kind of digs itself into Canada a little bit, like between Quebec and New Brunswick. So, so yeah, that doesn't surprise me. <clears throat> What are some channels you watch that aren't travel related? Um, so, uh, so I don't really watch a whole lot of channels these days. They tend to be mostly travel relate related, just because I don't have a lot of time to do like other, like other things. Um, <clears throat> so it's like mostly they're so mostly they're all travel re related. Although there's a there's a couple channels which. Well, I do watch the channel Yes Theory, but they they are heavily travel oriented. Although not all their videos are travel, though, but a lot of them are. There's some videos that are that that could be more about about like seeking discomfort and like, and things like that, where they may not necessarily be fully travel. But I know that they do like a lot of travel content. And then there's another channel that following too that's more like a life like a lifestyle channel that's called Chapters of Atlanta, which like where she's like where she, she it's like her channels like kind of like more like mindset and she does she even has like a few travel vlogs too but it's like it's like it's kind of like i don't it's not really necessarily self-help it's like but it's like it's like a lifestyle type of vlog so those are like the only ones i tend to watch right now but it's like again i've been kind of busy lately so i don't really have time to watch a lot of channels even even some of the travel related stuff i don't have a lot of time as much these days but so it's mostly travel related stuff i i still tend to watch <clears throat> uh when you started to upload 15 years ago most people had variety channels but most almost also rel relevant channels are very niche yep so it's like yeah like so it's like yeah that's yeah that's kind of what i've noticed too it's like a lot of people will even with me too, it's like whether it's like travel or even, or even if you niche down even more where you're doing like, whether it's like Michigan travel or weekend travel or, or even like food travel. It's like, yeah, people will post like a lot of different content, which are more to a, to a specific category. Like 
just like in my early days, like other than like the occasional trip I did to like to Colorado or to Texas or to like a, or back or back in the days, like to like a video game convention, I was doing mostly like content in Michigan just because I, li- I live in Michigan and still do right now. And it's like, I'm easily able to get out to travel to different places around the state. So, so I was able to do like a lot of Michigan based content especially back then. And of course, and of course I still do Michigan content these days, especially with the driving videos. <clears throat> Scott, one of my favorite videos of yours is the cookery class you did in Bali. Uh, would you ever do a cooking with Scott band series? I would love if you did. Uh, so that would be a cool idea the, the only challenging thing is that like, I, is that because I'm, because my channel is like a one man show. It's like, I don't, because I don't have someone else who's helping me with filming or anything. So it's not, <clears throat> so it'd be kind of difficult to do something like that. So, because I know because there's been some cooking videos, videos I have seen in the past too. Even something as simple as like watching like Gordon Ramsay, where he's been, where he shows himself cooking different things where it's like, you got different camera angles where it's like when you're showing the person cooking the dish. And then there's also like a camera view of someone like stirring, like stirring like eggs or something, or, or they're trying to decorate something like in the case of baking. So it would be, be so, so I don't know if I would ever would do something like that just because it would be, it's like, I would have to have, have help with that one before I would even do, do something like that. But it would be a really cool idea though. But <clears throat> But it's like, yeah, it would be kind of challenging, though. But it's always, it's always a cool idea, though. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for the question, and yeah, and uh, it's uh, great to see you on here too. Do you ever drink water when you're filming videos? Up, uh, so not usually when I'm on video recording. With the driving videos, it's really easy because the driving or the driving videos, I'm always pointing toward the road, so you're not having to really watch me or anything. So I can easily like take my water bottle and take a drink or something. But if I'm on live on video, unless I was doing like like a live stream like this one where I have to, like usually like after I get done with filming a segment or something, then I'll take a break and I'll drink some water, but it's pretty rare. I drink anything on camera just because it's just, it's just as like 10 or 15 seconds to the video and people are, people may not necessarily have like a, they might have like a shorter attention span to where they may not want to watch 15 seconds of me drinking water or something. So, but so yeah, I usually, unless I'm doing like a live stream, I'm usually not drinking water on camera, but like when I'm like in between takes, yeah, I'll occasionally will drink some water because it's always important to stay hydrated. <clears throat> Hello, Scott, man. Hey there, DJ Ryan. Great to, great to see you on here. <clears throat> Are your fans pretty dangerous, Scott, man? Have you had any run-ins with a dangerous fan? Thankfully, no. Like, everybody, everybody's everybody been very friendly. And, like, like any people I have, uh, I've happened to come across, so either randomly or even, like, a meetup or something, everybody's been very friendly. But at the same time, though, I'm always being careful of my surroundings. And I only will meet people in public places where there's people around. Because it's never a good idea to meet someone you've never met in person, like, either at, at a home or someplace that's out of public sight because you never know what could happen. But thankfully, but thankfully everybody who I have met has been, they've been very friendly. And that I've made some, some great memories with people too. Like even met, I even met up with a very good follower of mine in home for England, uh, two, two years ago. And that was a really cool meetup where we got to do enjoy a nice dinner at I think it was the Huntsman Inn to the west of of Homeford. And I know, and, I, and I, but yeah, it's like anyway. So I had a really great time with that. So I I, think I need to get back out to England at some point too. Love to love to go back. <clears throat> okay, I'm trying to see where I left off. <clears throat> Which do you prefer, Detroit style Chicago deep dish or New York style pizza? So this is referring to the different pizza styles. So, so I'm a little biased. Uh, my favorite is pro- I, I I go back and forth. Like Detroit style and Chicago style are, are probably my favorite style pizzas. I'm biased because I'm from Detroit, so I absolutely love Detroit style deep dish pizza. Whether it's Buddy's Pizza, Green Lantern Pizza, or even like the more like a more national chain like Jets Pizza, it's absolutely phenomenal. Really enjoy eating that, and of course. Chicago style 
pizza is one of my all-time favorites now too, especially now that I finally tried it for the first time two years ago when I went to Chicago, which that was incredible. Although it's very thick and you cannot finish it. <clears throat> it's like if you can finish if you can finish an entire Chicago deep dish pizza in one sitting, I applaud you because I don't have the stomach for that. <laughs> Uh, St. John, New Brunswick is where Irving is in headquarters. Oh, okay, that that, yeah, that that does ring a bell. In some ways, they are like Canada's version of Koch being in both oil and paper. Oh, okay, that's very cool. <clears throat> Would you ever throw on some leather and go to a Sturgis bike rally? Uh, probably not because, well, not to participate in a motorcycle. Like, I don't ever see myself riding a motorcycle. It, <clears throat> but, like, I don't see, ever see myself wearing leather or anything like that uh, it's just not it's not really my style but it would on the other hand it would be cool to visit Sturgis South Dakota to see like the huge like motorcycle rally which takes place I think every August or something although one funny thing is I think when I went to North when I went to North and South Dakota a few few years ago I was there I think close to the same time as the rally in Sturgis but I didn't really go to it in fact, I think I think it was August 2020 was when I went to South Dakota. I think the Sturgis rally was going on, but I didn't really feel comfortable going to that just because it was the pandemic and it's like I was trying to take precautions back then. So I didn't really attend that, but it would be cool at least to check it out, though. Will you be taking a trip to Nassau County for the Cricket World Cup this summer? Uh, probably not because I even know, I didn't even know about the about the Cricket World Cup. It would be pretty cool to check it out, though. Uh, is there anywhere in the world you would refuse to travel to? Um, so here's the thing. It's like, it's, it's like I love the – like there's really great things about every place in the, in the world, although there's there would be places that, let's say right now, I would not want to travel to or anything just because of – because it could be a little bit more dangerous. There could be a lot of things going on, like politically or something. Like, for example, it's like, well, 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 for one, I know like Americans can't travel to North Korea, for example. So with the exception of maybe like that little border village that's on the North and South Korean border, to, where you can technically go into North Korea by footsteps or something. You can go like on a tour group from the South Korean side. That's allowed, but... Right now, you can't go to North Korea proper, at least on a U.S. passport. It's like that I can't even go to at all. And I wouldn't – I feel I'd be really uneasy about going there, at least right now. It's like, I don't know. If you kind of – I don't know about that one. And then, of course, and there's some other countries too where there is, it was very politically unstable too. Like Because I know that like Yemen, for example, it's not really a safe idea to go there right now just because of all the stuff going on over there. I'm not going to really talk about that or anything because I want to try to keep this more travel related. I don't want to get any geopolitical talk or anything like that. But it's like, but it's like, but like, like other than that stuff, though, it's like, yeah, that, that with every destination, like there's always something really cool about a really cool place, whether it's in here in North America or South America, Europe, Africa, Asia. Or like Australia, it's like, <clears throat> but it's like it's like, but when it comes to visiting a country, it's like yeah, it's like, it's like yeah, I'll I'll look at the travel alerts on them, and I I won't go there if there's like a war going at a, a particular spot, but but sometimes some of the travel alerts can be highly exaggerated to where it's like like really, it's like this can happen anywhere, but but it's like yeah, it, 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 it's. But I won't travel to like a war zone or anything like that because at the same time, I would like to be able to come home alive. <laughs> but so it's like, yeah, so so it's like I'll travel to any place that's not someplace that I'll that be coming back in a body bag. <laughs> yep, Scott, man, good to, see, good to see you live. Hey, that's great. Great to, great to see you on here. I can't believe it's nearly been two years since you were last in home for the. Yep. Yep. I was just talking about you on here, too. And, and I know. And of course, uh, Tom, I know you're on here too. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was too bad I was able to see you two years ago because I know you really wanted to see me. Like, to try to try to, to try to join us for the meetup in Homeford, but I'll need to come back though at some point. Anyway, so any plans to return anytime soon? Uh, that steak and nail place is calling. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd love to go back at some point. I, I don't know if I'll go back later this year, but anything's possible. But. 
But I would definitely love to go back to home for England, though, because I just love the town. It's absolutely beautiful there. And I've been there twice and I'd love, love to go back. Even it's just for like a like for like a couple of days or something. And plus, and there's and I know there's like one or two people I met on the Georgia trip I did back in September who live in the UK. I'd love to do like meetups with them as well, too. So it's definitely something I would definitely would like to do at some point, though. But yeah, I'll let I'll let you and Tom know like yeah, when the next time I come out to that area, though. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, have you ever gotten into trouble while traveling? So it depends on trouble. So like uh, legal trouble, no. So I, 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 it's like I'm not really anything like that. Although like in our group trip, we did get kicked out of a place because uh, even though we had we had permission to go there, but it's like yeah, it's like one of the one of the people there did not really like us being there, so it was the way we had to leave, unfortunately. But it, but he was respectful about it. It's like because we were. Because when he told us that, we, that he wanted us to go, it's like, okay, we'll, we'll be on our way. But, but I will say there was one time though where it's like I was trying to film a restaurant for like a restaurant tour, and the person didn't like me filming the restaurant or something, so they actually kicked me out before I even went in the restaurant. So, so I was like, all right, see ya. And then behind the scenes, I was like saying to myself, all right, then I guess they won't, they won't get public, publicity. Then they're lost. <laughs> But then, and of course, and then the only other time I had any type of trouble would have been the time I sprained my foot in Croatia seven years ago when I, I ended up falling at Plavice Lake State Park or National Park in Croatia. And then for the next few days of my trip, I had to walk really slowly and my foot was kind of swollen and it was hurting. So it's like, I, so it's like I had to, on occasion, rest in my hotel room just to ice my foot a little bit, but then get back out and of course, Enjoy the journey, but those are some of the different instances that I've run into different issues with. But nothing, nothing severe, nothing major. So yeah, it was all minor stuff. Uh, what state park do you like? Uh, I assume you're talking about Michigan, but but just because that's where I live. But yeah, so I guess I'll answer that based on Michigan. So there's a lot of really incredible state parks in Michigan. It's kind of hard to pinpoint a favorite. But I do know that it's like some of my some of my favorites. Like I, I really enjoy like a lot of the state parks over on the west side of the state, like along Lake Michigan. Like I really like Holland State Park, for example, it has a nice beach area with a nice lighthouse. And of course, I really enjoy Ludington State Park, which has that nice walk to the to the lighthouse. And of course, have some sand dunes over there, and even like Warren Dune State Park in the southwest part of the state was really cool too, where you got a lot of sand dunes. Like there are a lot of incredible sand dunes along the in the west part of the state. But yeah, some of my favorites are tend to be like along the Lake Michigan coast. Okay, have you been to Adrian, Michigan? Ah, yes, I have. I've been there. I've been there three times. So twice for a vid, twice for YouTube, and once for. For a personal matter, it's like I, I did two YouTube videos in Adrian. I did an older one and then I did a brand new one two years ago. And then one of my one of my nieces uh, graduated out of graduated from Adrian College. So I got to go back there to attend a, a graduation ceremony, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> uh, when are you planning on traveling to Chicago again? I'd love to see you explore more of the Windy City. Uh, no immediate plans, but I'd love to get back to Chicago because like I Really enjoy checking out the city, and I know there's other different neighborhoods I can always check out too. But yeah, I can, and of course there's more more food like the pizza I still have to eat. So I I can always see myself going back there at some point too, just because it's it's an easy weekend trip too. It's like not necessarily something I have to plan like a week long vacation or anything. I can easily make like a quick week weekend trip or something. But yeah, no immediate plans, but I would like to get back out to Chicago at some point. Plus, I think there's other, some other museums I need to see too. Do you get restless on long drives? Um, so usually I, I'm able to stay awake on the long drives. And what's nice too is that I do have to stop every once in a while to fill up my gas tank or to get out of the car to stretch my legs to go get some food. So like a lot of times where I'll stop at a place to get something to eat. I usually don't go through the drive through I'll usually go into the restaurant to get food and just eat inside the restaurant because it's a nice little break from the car. But I 
I pretty much have it down to a science now to where I can easily do like 12 to 13, 14 hour drives. And then I, and then I'll of course get to my hotel for the night just to rest. So I'll usually try to get at least seven hours of sleep at night. So that way I'm well rested for the next day. And especially if, if I'm having to drive across the country where I may have to stop for a night, like for example, when I'm driving down to Texas or something, I'll try to do like the, the, the most driving on day one. So that way day two is I'm not driving as far. So that does definitely help a little bit. <clears throat> Are you big into coasters? Do you enjoy going to theme parks? Um, it's like, I love to go to go check out some of the different theme parks, but it's like, I try to go to some of the other places over the theme parks though. Although I would love to check out some of the parks, either like in Orlando or like out in like in California though. But it's like, but it's like I haven't been on a uh, like a true roller coaster since I went to Cedar Point for like a for my eighth grade field trip back in 2002, which I had a lot of fun going there. Like I had a lot of fun going on some of the different ro roller coasters there. But would be cool to go back to to them at some point, although it'd be kind of hard to film them for the most part, just because it's like what I would love to do is be able to film myself on the rides. But depending on the type of ride, even that like a GoPro mounted to like a to my head or something like that, it could easily fall off and and then a falling camera could could be very dangerous. So it's like it's uh it'd be kind of challenging challenging to do. And plus out a lot of the theme parks they don't even allow cameras on the ride because you could easily lose lose a camera. It could fall on someone and it would not be a fun day for anybody. <laughs> have you been to the Toledo Zoo? Uh, yes, I have. I've not filmed the video at it, but I've been to the Toledo, Toledo Zoo I think two or three times. It's a pretty cool zoo. It's even highly rated too as a really, really great zoo to visit in the United States. It's up there along with like zoos like the San Diego Zoo, although I think that's like the top notch zoo in all of the United States. But the Toledo Zoo is supposed to be really, is really good. And We'll, we'll, let, we'll like to go back there at some point. Thank you for answering all my questions, sir. We love your channel. Keep up the great work up. Th thank you, Cardi, for, for joining on here today. It's great, great having you on here and look forward to look forward to seeing on uh, in the comment section of future videos. So, so it's kind of funny how some business, businesses pay influencers for reviews these days. Oh, yeah. So it's pretty interesting that so yeah, most of the time when people have seen me film inside a restaurant, that they're, they're always praising me like oh think like like are you a youtuber or are you, are you a content creator it's like and they're thanking me for promoting the restaurant and like they absolutely love seeing that because they because it's publicity for them it gets people to be able to go into the different restaurants to check them out and i think there's even been one place too where i was filming inside a restaurant i think the owner saw me and was thanking me for that and what and he even gave me like a free dessert too which was really really kind of them but it was only the one restaurant where it's like, no, like, please take your camera elsewhere. So, so that's thankfully it's only been an isolated incident. Although well, actually, I, there was a second incident though, where I wasn't kicked out, but it's like, they were telling me that cameras weren't allowed in the restaurant. It was a restaurant I went to in Belgrade, Serbia. It was like an upscale restaurant I went to that had a really good view of this, like looking outside the window and, they saw my camera around me. I was like, oh, sorry, like you, you can't take pictures in here or anything. But they were cool, at least with me just dining to, for me just to dine in to eat, though. So it's like I still ate at the restaurant. I just couldn't film anything for like YouTube or anything. So I just had to put my camera away and I just had my meal off camera. And, and it was a good meal, too. So I wasn't disappointed or anything. Okay. Um, Oh, uh, try to see where I left off. <clears throat> just to give, just give you guys a heads up, uh, I'm probably gonna be wrapping up the stream in about maybe like ten or so minutes from now. But so, but, but we still got quite a few questions though. So we're still we're still doing well though. Would you ever go camping in a video? That would be a really cool idea. I don't know if I would go by myself though. Like if I were to do like a camping video, I would like to go with other people because when it comes to camping, it's a lot more fun when you're joining with other people. So. I'd have to join with, I'd, I'd have to have someone join me for that one before I would do something, but it would be cool though, because Michigan does, does have a lot of great campgrounds. And I remember back when I was a kid, my, my parents and I would go to a lot of different really cool campgrounds, like over on the West side of the state, like up near like the Sleeping Bear Dunes area or Holland State Park, where we used to go camping. And there are even some times where I, where, where my parents and I went camping, like with 
my aunts and uncles and my cousins on my dad's side of the family. We had a lot of fun, like going tubing down the river and it was, it was a lot of fun. Like uh, there was some great memories from, from, uh, from the, from those camping trips. Why would a falling camera be dangerous? How big is your camera? Well, well, if you're on a roller coaster, if you're, let's say you're flogging something, if you're on a big roller coaster, if you were to drop your camera, it's like, it'll, it's, it's, it's going to fall a long, a long ways down on the ground. And it's like, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not a physicist. So I, so I can't really explain the science behind it, but if you drop an object from, let's say you're, you're to drop an object from a sky top of a skyscraper. If you're to drop on the ground, like when it impacts a floor, it, it basically will, it, it can do some, it can do some damage. Like just think like, think of like the, during like a, like a thunderstorm and you have like hailstones coming down. Like if you have some large hailstones, it can, create dents or cracks in your car and it can do some damage. So like, imagine if a GoPro was to fly off a roller coaster and come crashing down as a person, it can do, it could do some damage. Like it could, it's, it, it could hurt someone. So it's like, so it's like, if you were to film yourself on a ride, you have to make sure your camera is really tight on well or taped on very well. So that way it can't go flying off of you. If you were to travel like at a hundred miles per hour or if you're going upside down and your camera goes flying or something. So that's, 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 that's basically what I was re re referring to. So, so like if I were to film myself on a roller coaster ride, I'd have to make sure I have a very firm grip. And, and that's kind of why with a lot of the big rides, and a lot of the big theme parks, they usually don't allow like cameras or cell phones just because of that, of that potential. Have you ever been to Alpena, Michigan? I only know of it because it is the the butt of several jokes on the TV series Home Improvement. Oh yeah, yeah, I yeah, Home Improvement is a great show. One of my favorite one, one of my favorite sitcoms. Uh, so yeah, I've seen some of those episodes of, of, where they talked about Alpena. So I have been to Alpena a couple times, and I even went I last went a few years ago. And Alpena is a pretty nice city. So I have so I do have a video from a few years ago for when I went up to Alpena. <clears throat> Have you ever been to Las Vegas, Scott? I would love to see you film a hangover style video from there. That'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> I don't know. Be, I feel like it's one be one of those what it happens in what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas type of things. <laughs> Just because I don't really drink or anything, so I don't I don't really so I don't know if I would do something like that. But I have yet to visit Las Vegas. Would be really cool to visit, like to, to walk along the, the the Vegas Strip, check out all the different attractions along in there like the the big the, the big fountains along over at the Bellagio for example or walking like the Venetian hotel see all the different shops and even like the just to see all the things inside the Venetian or all the different hotels and it'd be really cool to, to see and of course at the same time too there's other attractions near Las Vegas I like to go to like like the Valley of Valley of Fire State Park or also going over to like the Hoover Dam over over the border of uh, Nevada and Arizona, it's definitely something I would like to would like to do at some point, though. <clears throat> oh, I'm trying to lose track of comments here. Okay, so what what bears in Michigan do you like to visit? Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking about with with bears in Michigan. Uh, so yeah, so I'm not sure what you're asking about with that one, but. It, when it comes to like the like animal bears, I've not seen I've not seen a bear in Michigan yet, though. Although there are I, I know there are black bears which do exist up in the northern part of the state, though. I see YouTubers go to the global south, special specifically impoverished regions, and make videos that exaggerate scams, crime, and danger to confirm their own biases in their audiences. What do you think about this? <clears throat> so what so with some of the different videos that but yeah, it's like it's because there's some YouTubers out there who will go to to some places in the global south where where they're trying to they're trying to show the truth about it. So like if you're telling a truth, the truth that the big thing is you have to be authentic and tell the truth about things. I know like YouTubers like like Drew Binsky for example, like he's been to, to every country in the world, and he does a really good job telling a story about some of these different places and he shows the truth. He doesn't exaggerate anything really, at least for what I have noticed, that's really good content, but going to go, but going to a place, 
like in the global South, for example, or anywhere. And you're basically, and you're trying to, and you're making videos that aren't really truthful. Like you're exaggerating that, oh, this place is poor. This place is dirty, or this is the most dangerous place in the world or something. Yeah. It's like, yeah, if you're exaggerating anything, yeah, I'm not really cool with the idea because they're, those are the people that are probably just, just doing it for the, for the clicks or for the views. And it's like, yeah, it's like you might get views for it, but it's like, you're, you're not doing anybody a favor with being, with lying or fibbing or exaggerating things because it's not helping the, it's not helping the the people there because yeah, unfortunately that it's like there are people in the world who it's like, it's a, who are having a lot of different problems and taking advantage of that, like just for YouTube content and doing it like in a bad light. That's not, that's not really cool in my opinion. It's like, it's like, you gotta be, it's like, you gotta be true. It's like, you gotta be true. And it's like, it's, 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 it's definitely an eye opening experience, experience to go to these different places. But if you're planning to make a YouTube video about that, it's like, you gotta be truthful. And it's like, yeah, it's like, don't do anything. That's just for the clicks. You got it. You got it. It's like you gotta be authentic. You gotta be true. It's like you, you, like. So it's like, yeah, it's like having these clickbaity tiles saying this is the most dangerous country in the world, and in reality, it's it's not all that bad. It's like, yeah, it's, it's like, yeah, it's like it's, I have a hard time with a lot of these clickbaity titles. So it's like, because yeah, it's like, uh, see, but yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, yep. The moral of the story is, yeah, it's like no matter no matter what country or what city or what town it is, yeah, it's like yeah, it's like yeah, you don't want to don't exaggerate anything. It's like you have to, it's like you have to tell, it's like you have to tell the truth because in the end, the truth, the truth wins out, and and you're 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 helping, it's like you're helping people with telling the truth. <clears throat> you you need a hidden camera in your hat. <laughs> yeah, there are people out there who will. People will sneak like they're like a camera in their hat or something in there and they'll just randomly film without people noticing or something. It's like, I don't know if I would want to be anything like that. Although some people will do that. They're trying to get something more candid. I guess you might like a cabin or your rental to be camping off the ground, especially in the spring. Yeah. That, 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 that probably would work too, just because yeah, it's like, yeah, staying in a cabin would be a really cool experience. So that, that would, that'd be it. Just like another another trend that's caught on too is glamping, where it's like it's a combination of staying in a hotel and like you're camping, but it's like it's, it's like you're it's like you're camping, but you're in a hotel or or like a hotel or resort. That's so, so, so that so like glamping is a real thing too. So that'd be something that's really cool too. So, so that's something I could even see, see myself doing, like even just by myself. Plans to visit Georgia, especially the Atlanta area. Uh, no immediate plans, but I do like to get back. To, I would like to get back to Atlanta at some point, though, to even check out some of the different suburbs around there. Or, heck, if I decide to do a road trip down to Florida or something, I could even do, like, driving videos in the Atlanta area, like drive on some of the freeways in Atlanta. <clears throat> Have you ever been to an immersive art exhibit? It's like... I, such as Otherworld and Columbus or the Meow Wolf location or Omega or Mega Mart. They're a lot of fun. I have not, I don't think I've been to any of those, but yeah, I definitely should try to check out one of those at some point. I did hear about the Omega Mart in Vegas though. That, that's supposed to be because I, because I, I've seen my good friend, Chris Rainey, who, who's yellow productions on YouTube. Like he did a video on Omega Mart and that looked really cool. Like I, if I were to go to Vegas, I, I could see myself going there. The law of terminal velocity forbids your GoPro from seriously hurting a person falling from a moving roller coaster. Velocity doesn't increase exponentially. It's limit, limited based on the weight of object. Oh, okay. Oh, oh cause yeah, that's, that's good. That's good to know. Again, I, I, I did not really take any physics classes or anything like that. So it's like, I'm just going based on what I may have heard or anything like that. So it's, again, I wouldn't really be an expert on that stuff, <laughs> but yeah, thanks for sharing that though. Sunglasses falling off is often a problem on roller coasters. At least a handful of times I wore my prescription glasses on a coaster. They didn't fall off likely because they are adjusted mental. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, yeah. I'm, I'm sure this happens all the time when you're on a roller coaster where things will fly out of people like a sun, like sunglasses or earplugs, although earplugs will only fall out if they're not secure very well. But stuff like that, I'm sure is pretty or more common than you think. Hello, Scott, man. Will you do a vlog at, a, at the Jamaican pot restaurant? Uh, 
I forget. I think you. I think you or someone else mentioned about this. Uh, let me write that down because I. I'm not sure where that where that is, but yeah, I might have to I'll have to look that one up though because it might be a cool idea to go to. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, definitely. Th I think yeah. Thank you for bringing that up because yeah. So I think I was asked about this previously, so and I forgot about it. So yeah, I'll, I'll let me write that down because it might be a cool idea. Because Jamaican food is pretty pretty nice. I've been to a couple of Jamaican restaurants. One up in Mackinac Island, and then another time I went to one in Houston, Texas, where they had some had some delicious jerk chicken. <clears throat> I guess you would not be comfortable filming the girls in lingerie on the Vegas Strip. Uh, it was on the Vegas Strip. If it's out in public, that's one thing. Where that's done all the time, where that that's okay. It's like, but it's like, but it's like if it's a place where they don't encourage filming, yeah, I would not want to film that. Like for example, like if you were to go to Amsterdam to like the red light district, you do not want to film the, you do not want to film the women in the windows that like in the red light district of Amsterdam. That is a huge no no. It's like, like they even tell you in all the guidebooks you don't want to do it because. Because if you were to do that, like the best case scenario, there, 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 there might be dirty looks or something. Worst case scenario, like a bouncer or someone will come out there and, and wreck your camera or something. So it's like, so like if it's out in a public place and there's no like laws or anything saying don't do it, it's, it's okay. Like if it's out in a public place, I would think, but, but anywhere where they tell you don't film or something. Yeah, you definitely you, you need to go by those guidelines. So, like, if something tells you no filming, you, like you, you need to like you need to follow the the rules. But that's usually why when I go off traveling somewhere, if I were to go to a place, all of a sudden I see a sign saying no cameras or something, I try to abide by that rule because it's like yeah, because I I try to pay I try to play by the rules. <clears throat> uh, what fairs would you go visit in Michigan fairgrounds in Michigan? Um, that's not something I really have thought of doing, although there'd be some cool ones to do. I know there's a really good one out in Ionia County, Michigan. That's in Ionia, Michigan. That's what that's in between Lansing and Grand Rapids. I've heard a lot of good things about that state fair. And there's also the state, the Michigan state fair that's held at the suburban show place in Novi, Michigan. It's of Detroit. That would be a cool one to go to as well, too. <clears throat> So that's always not a, that's not a bad idea though. <clears throat> oh, hello, Scott. Man. Uh, hey there, a uh, local realtor. <laughs> so, so somebody told you about the Jamaican pot. Ah, uh, yes. So, uh, so it sounds like it's so, so it sounds like it's a very popular restaurant. So yeah, but I may have to, maybe after the streams over, I may have to look up that restaurant because I may have to cover it in a future video or something. Because it's always a, always cool to find a Jamaican restaurant on my travels. And I think it's in the Detroit area, if I'm not mistaken, but yeah. <clears throat> okay. So I think we got through all the questions. So I think we'll get ready to start wrapping things up here because I actually have other things I've going on today. I, I need to have some more, but since we are starting to wrap up, I'll wait till after the stream's over. Oh, have you thought about seeing every Michigan County courthouse? Um, that idea has come in or come into play a little bit, although some courthouses unfortunately aren't as appealing as others. I love seeing all these historic courthouses, though, on my travels, though, because they're really cool to see. But I know there's some in some of the counties in Michigan which are very modern and not very appealing. Like, for example, I know like the one in like Washtenaw County is not really historic, that's right in Ann Arbor. And then there's the Oakland County Courthouse that's over like in Pontiac. That's it's not a historic courthouse. So I, I don't see me doing like a video or anything or trying to go see every courthouse in the state. But like some of the historic ones, would be really cool to see. Oh, and then, yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, Biv Meets Lab. Yes, I think I passed by your question by accident. So I apologize about that. But have you been to Jamaica, Scott Band? Uh, not yet. It would be cool to visit, though. <clears throat> Because I haven't been to any of the Caribbean islands yet. So like Jamaica would be cool to visit. Also, the, the Dominican Republic would be really cool, or even like Puerto Rico. <clears throat> but I do know some of the, especially some of the Caribbean islands can be a little expensive, though. So I got to be careful and make sure not to break my budget. Alpena is a nice county courthouse. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I remember seeing the one that's up there in Alpena. I went to Dominican Republic this year on a heavy metal cruise. Oh, that sounds really cool. <clears throat> Which I, I think you were telling me about that too, if I'm not mistaken. 
<clears throat> if you go to Jamaica, do you recommend partaking of the ganja? I don't know. I don't know what that is. Uh, to be honest, I don't know really what that is. Um, one thing I will say though is because uh, I know there's because I know there's, there's different cultures in Jamaica. I, I know there's like a in some areas there. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, talking about yeah marijuana or or cannabis. That probably not because I don't like the smell of it. Like anytime I walked on some of my different videos and and I and I could tell when someone's been smoking any type of cannabis, I was like, oh man, it's like I can't even I, I it's like I can't even imagine smoking anything like that. Just because like I don't smoke at all or anything, never have and don't ever plan to. Just like even if I were, if I were to visit Cuba one day, I don't even see myself I don't see me smoking a Cuban cigar or anything. Just because I don't know. I just having a bunch of chemicals in your lungs just does, does not sound appealing to me. So it so so I don't ever see me doing any type of cannabis or anything just because, yeah, it's like it can do some weird stuff, <laughs> even if it's even though it, it can be legal in some areas, but it's not something that I would ever see myself doing. <clears throat> what if you consumed it via a gummy, no smoke required? Uh, probably not. That, well, the only way I ever would do like a gummy or something is if, I, if it was for like a medical purpose, like heaven forbid or something like 40 years from now, where does it get like cancer or something? And a doctor was to recommend having some form of like CBD or, or something like that, like a CBD gummy then, or even for, or, or, or even as, or, or not necessarily cancer, but even like, like arthritis or any type of bone issues or something or, or chronic pain. Then it, like if a doctor was to recommend like CBD oil or something like that, that's something that's different. Like I could see myself doing something like that, but when it comes to like, smoking anything like that yeah i don't ever see me doing anything like that just because it's just don't i just don't like the smell of it and i don't know it's just not really appealing to me it's like it's like I, it's like a, it's like i like to be able to to breathe comfortably <laughs> maybe have a ganja or i don't even know how you say that <laughs> gummy and then order some to be very funny <laughs> <laughs> it might help with nerves. Yeah, I've heard about that too. But at the same time, there's there's other ways that you can relieve stress. That like like there's there's things like watching YouTube or going for a hike. That's that's the type of stress relief I enjoy doing. Like going out for a nice hike. Which as a matter of fact, I might do that after dinners at some point though, because I would love to. Because it's an, it's still a nice day out here in Southeast Michigan, so we'd like to get out to the park or something. Because it's a great stress reliever. <clears throat> All right. So what's for dinner tonight? Um, plan to get some Mexican food, which matter of fact, I should probably order some in a little bit uh, because I'm starting to get a little hungry, but I'm probably just going to get like a takeout or something just because I don't really have time tonight to go to a restaurant or anything. So just get like takeout or something, but some chicken fajitas that sound really good right about now. You're an anti-drug scum, man. Uh, thank you. Oh, I have to, uh, oh, no worries. Yeah, it's like, it's like there's there's better things to do in life, or there's a, to to relieve stress, or try to, or for when it comes to self care, it's like you gotta do things which don't hurt you or anything like that. So that's why I try to do the things like going for a walk or travel. Like travels a great travels a great stress reliever and but. But yeah, <clears throat> I, I had to go hiking with it. Oh yeah, it's like yeah, I'm always exploring. I, I'm even exploring the idea in the future too of doing like group trips at some point. That would be a cool idea to do like a host like a group trip. So uh, if I were to ever host a group trip, I'll definitely will let let everybody know though because I, I would be I am open to the idea of doing like a like a group trip or something. Whether it's like a long weekend or like a week long trip or something, that's something I could see myself doing at some point. But yes, definitely stay tuned. Too many of the travel vloggers glorify extreme druggies. Yeah, it's like, yeah, there are a lot of travel vloggers out there, which, yeah, which will will advocate a lot of that type of stuff, which, yeah, it's not something that I personally would find intriguing or anything like that. But it's their, it's their channel, so it's like I can't tell them how to run their channel. Have you ever thought about doing a QSR quarterly Scottman review? Um, 
not yet, but if I were to have this be more of like a, uh, either like a part-time business or something more than just ad revenue, I could see myself doing that because I, for like a lot of content creators who are doing this as a living, whether it's part-time or full-time, they'll do like quarter, quarterly reviews where, where they'll market or not market, but they'll show like what, how, how much they've earned, how much they spent per quarter. Like that would be a really cool idea. It's a really cool idea of being open, especially for people who are trying to try to do the same thing in which you are. But if I were to start doing this as a, even at a minimum, a part-time business, yeah, I could see myself doing that <clears throat> because it would be a good idea. That sounds absolutely delicious. Oh yeah, of course you can't, you can't go wrong with Mexican food. It's one of my all time favorite foods. It's up there with Mediterranean food and Thai food and Indian food. <laughs> Darn, if you're the the anti-drug and I use drug, does that mean you're anti? Well, it's like, I don't want to necessarily say that because everybody has their everybody has their own views. It's like because <clears throat> because some people will do like cannabis or something like that. It's like I, 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 it's like it's like although I'm not I'm not a fan of that stuff, but at the same time I I can't tell people what to do or anything like that. So it's like. Because I, I, because there, because I, I have, I think I have some friends who I think, who, think who have used that, used that stuff, and I'm still friends with them. It's like I, I'm not the type of people who's like, oh, it's like, oh, you smoke marijuana, I'm not gonna be friends with you. It's like, I, like no, but, <clears throat> but yeah, so yeah, no worries there though. It's like everybody has their own lo different lifestyle, so it, it, it just have to, I, it just have to be respectful. QSR is a great is a great shout out a roundup of quarterly highlights. Oh, absolutely! Also love Thai food. I could live off Pad Thai. So be, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Thai food is absolutely absolutely delicious. There's a Thai restaurant near my work that I go to all the time. It's just absolutely tasty. That is really cool, of you, Scott man. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, yeah. So speaking of dinner, I should probably order some food soon. So I should probably get ready to start wrapping things up a little bit, though. Oh, so I'll I'll go and I'll answer this one last question though. That if you had a time machine and could do only do one trip, what travel video video to the past would you make? Oh man, that's a really tough one. I think this is a good question too to wrap things up on because it's a kind of an open ended one. But it's really hard. It's really hard to tell. But it's like, what would be really cool though? I just thought this just now is that it would be cool to do like a travel vlog. Is maybe. Like right here in Michigan or here in the Metro Detroit area where I could go back to like, maybe not necessarily like the sixties or the seventies or the eighties, but maybe like the, like the nineties or something like when I was growing up as a kid, like go back in time, this just to, just to relive like how Michigan was like back in the nineties to see how dif different it is compared to now. <clears throat> and maybe there was some type of magic to where I could, have a camera out and film it, but at the same time, people would not see me. But maybe at the same, at the same time, people wouldn't see me or anything. Like I'd be invisible because I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to do anything that would change the future or anything like that. But again, I've watched too much Back to the Future. <laughs> but it would be cool to go back to like the '90s or even like the '80s, like before I was born, to see what things were like here in Michigan, like either when I was a kid or before I was even born. But that's a really cool question, though. Up, oh, enjoy your dinner, Scott. Love the Q and A. Keep the content coming, my friend. Up, oh, th thank you very much for joining on here today. Thank you for your questions as well, too. Thank you for the great stream, Scott. Man, uh, rampaging elephant. Thank you, thank you so much for all your support. Uh, Grandpa Soaps, can't wait to see the video about your dinner. <laughs> I I usually don't film takeout usually, although I had to make it a, an exception back during the pandemic, though. But <laughs> but so this is probably not going to be on video or anything, but. Let's just say it's a restaurant I have. It's a restaurant I have covered before, though. So, so you can always watch back a previous video. <laughs> Cheers, Scott or the Scott man. Great Q and A. That thank you, Captain Crip, for joining out here today. I enjoyed all your different questions. Um, thank you, Scott man. As always, a pleasure. Th thank you so much, Ben, for joining on here. And Asteroid Dunk Dragon seventy six, beautiful stream. Thank you very for streaming. Up. Uh, thank you for joining today. Uh, can you tell us what the restaurant is? Um, I don't want to really give it away, unfortunately, because I don't, because even though I live in the Metro Detroit area, I don't want to reveal, reveal exactly where I live for privacy reasons. So I'm not going to really say the restaurant. So I got, unfortunately, I got to keep some things private for, for safety reasons. Not, not, not for you guys. Because, yeah, 
But but in case people who aren't subscribed to me or just random watchers or people who watch back the stream watch, I don't want to necessarily reveal exactly where I live or anything. So so there's some things in life I got to keep private though. <laughs> but yeah, but no worries. No worries with the question though. Yeah, definitely appreciate it. Still, <clears throat> uh, great great Scott's coming. <laughs> yep, yeah, nice connection to Back to the Future. <laughs> An AC ministry for my own dinner. Oh, no worries. There's a lot of great Mexican restaurants all around Metro Detroit, though. Like, there's all the great places in Mexican Town, for example, or in Southwest Detroit. There's also the Taco Tienda in Madison Heights. That's not really close to where I live or anything. That's close to where I work, but that's a really good taco place. One of my favorite places for tacos. It's very authentic tacos. Absolutely delicious. <clears throat> Uh, that's a smart idea, Scott, I mean, just in case you have some dangerous fans. Oh, not, not, not necessarily fans, but it could be like random people who just happen to to, to come on to, the, to, watch, to watch this this live stream as playback or something. Because it's not just subscribers who, who could be watching this. It could be just random followers, or not followers, but random viewers, too. Enjoy your dinner, Scott, man. Appreciate your time and insight, buddy. Uh, thank you so much, Big Bean Slap. Uh, it's great, uh, great that you're able to join today. And... Great Scott Marty. <laughs> this is heavy. <laughs> yep. yep. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll get ready to sign things out. And uh, yeah, really enjoy this Q&A. Really enjoy talking with all of you. You had, all had spectacular questions. And I yeah, hope to do another live Q&A for everybody, maybe sometime later this year or something. Uh, so I'll get ready to sign things out. And um, hope you enjoy the rest of the rest of your weekend. And I'll see you later. Thanks for joining. This. Thank you. And this is Scott, the Scott Man, signing out.